Hi everyone, um, I'm Rebecca Cispiano, MD at Tiger, and I'm joined today by um, Angela Lopez, who's the head of our city office, and Nicola Watson, who heads up our HR division. And we just wanted to give everyone some insights into what we're seeing um, in the employment market at the end of Q1. Angela, there's been a lot of interesting stuff happening in the city around sort of financial institutions. So I'm going to hand it over to you first, just to see if there's anything that you're seeing from your um, clients and candidates at the moment? I think the start of this quarter has been pretty steady with job flow um, and opportunities coming through, certainly an increase on the temporary side. Um, and I think that's a reflection of what's happening in the market. And from what I've been seeing and hearing, not recruitment freezes, but um, there's been uh, a hold on roles converting to perm or perm headcount. So I think that's why in turn we've then seen an increase in, in temp opportunities coming through. We've had lots of candidates inquiring, um, even if they're not ready to start their search just yet, just to see what potentially is going to be coming up in the next few months, you know, just to put the feelers out ultimately. Nicola, Q1, we were probably talking more about the impact on tech industries. Now that's kind of flown, you know, had a, a flow and effect to, to finance as well. Some of the areas we're hearing have been impacted on more the talent acquisition side. What would you say about that? Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely the internal talent teams that seem to have been hit quite hard in regards to what's been happening in the tech world. And that's had a knock on effect across other industries as well, sort of getting maybe a bit of scaremongering about what's happening in the big tech world and sort of making similar cuts as well, particularly with internal talent. You know, we have a lot of fantastic talent acquisition professionals who are approaching us. And, you know, we're trying to help them in their job search into other industries as well. Echoing what uh, Angela said as well earlier about the temp side of things, we've seen an uptick in regards to candidates temping. That's something that has been quite noted in the last sort of, I guess, month or two in the market. I did a bit of research and apparently it's been called quiet hiring. Um, as Angela mentioned, you know, with companies not having the permanent headcount, they're looking to you know, consultants to see if they can have, you know, additional support from the temp side. I mean, by no means it's not quiet out there. Um, we're still seeing, you know, a lot of roles coming through. And I think a lot of companies are expecting now where they have sort of come to the end of appraisal processes and bonuses are being paid, there's probably going to be a lot more movement over the coming months. Is that something that you would both agree with? Yes, I agree. I think that the recruitment process is taking a lot longer at the moment. Interviews are sometimes up to three, four stages, which normally, and I think if we look at the market um, last year, would maybe have been a one, two stage at the very most and wrapped up within a week. Um, and I think this is just given the uncertainty in the market, people are being a lot more cautious um, and taking their time hiring to find the right people. Yeah, I would agree with that, Angela. Like, I, It's what I've been calling sticky recruitment, where it just feels like roles just aren't moving along as, as quickly as they should be. There are sort of final interview stages being added in that you weren't previously part of the process. Um, so candidates are needing to kind of be prepared to, to wait longer to land a role. And, and I would agree 100% that's even the case with temporary positions. Nicola, is that the same on your side? Yeah, so one thing that I've noticed with our roles in the HR department is there's been quite a big uptick in regards to case studies. So candidates now having the three stages of interview processes, whereas there was always case studies and assessments, there has been a big increase in that. Line managers are definitely looking to make sure that the candidates have those skills, even if it's the Excel, you know, calculating annual leave manually. Right? Hiring managers are looking to kind of have that confirmed. I think as well, Angela, where you were saying it's, you know, we're moving back to it being an employer's market. I've noticed that shift within office working and it seems like more companies are trying to bring their staff back to the office. Now, that, that's not everyone, but I think where companies have got that office space, they want to utilise it. And I would say we're probably seeing about you know 60% of our roles um, are fully office based roles or, you know, at the least only sort of having maybe one day working from home on a Friday or something. The interesting side on that is what candidates are after. Um, what would you say the comments are from your candidates around hybrid working? I think the clients that um, aren't necessarily pushing for everyone to be back more is just purely down to limited space in their offices. So they're happy to have two days, three in max, just to allow for um, everyone to rotate with the office, limited office space that they have. 
Rebecca, with the four day working week that we're hearing people potentially looking to introduce, is that anything that you have been hearing much about with organisations that you're recruiting for at the moment? Speaking personally, there's probably only like a small handful of clients that um, we've spoken to that have tried the four day week and it's, it's had um, mixed feedback, to be honest. Some have said that um, there are a lot of things that perhaps they hadn't considered that pose problems around, you know, you, you can't have a whole company of everyone sort of taking a Monday off or taking a Friday off. Days need to be staggered. Um, and then, you know, there is the question of you're still losing a day of a day of productivity. So whilst, you know, the, the feedback shows there was, you know, something like 92% of um, employers found that their workforce was more productive, um, I think there are, you know, I don't think it's something that we're going to see um, regularly. Nicola, you spoke to someone as well, didn't you, that had, had trialled it? Yes, what we've seen with the four-day work week is it's come with huge positives and a whole new perspective of how people can work and structure their days to achieve the productivity of five days within four. But there are so many complexities for HR teams to think about when rolling out the trial, but then also sustaining it uh, in longevity in regards to logistics, again, productivity, ensuring that working patterns make sure that the company is available uh, be it for its services or its products um, at the level as it was for the five days a week, but in four then staggering employees work patterns as well. So it's going to be really interesting to see the ongoing feedback and the outcomes as well and how employees found it, how employers found it. And it'd be really great to see how it went in reality and if it's something that can continue. I think it will be interesting because, I, I, you know, I don't think any employee is going to is going to say, actually, this didn't work as well for us as it, as it could have done, because obviously everyone would love to have a, you know, a three day um, weekend. The other trend we've been hearing about loads is career cushioning, and it's probably, you know, the uncertainty in the um, markets at the moment is probably feeding into that a little bit more. We're, we're getting a lot of candidates that are looking, but they're only going to make a move for something which is offering a substantial amount um, higher in salary, um, working, you know, better working conditions. It really needs to tick all the boxes in order for them to move forward. Um, I don't know if either of you have had, a, have had any experiences with that as well. I would completely agree. I think the challenge is at the moment that we are in more of a client driven market. So the list of demands that candidates often have, I feel clients don't have to really flex to to meet all of them um this does often just mean that candidates are looking for a little bit longer um which you know if they're in a role and they're not in a rush is is fine um but it's really to, for them to to spend that additional time trying to find a company that will tick every box of what they're looking for yeah it definitely feels like a, a different recruitment market to the one that we we're in say you know six or nine months ago for certain i think i mean overall we're seeing positive sentiments from our from our clients um, I think you know candidates are um, that are looking for roles are really grateful for the positions they're getting in and feeling like they're, they're moving forward in their careers yeah it's still it still feels positive out there I agree I think with what we're hearing from companies Q2 is only going to continue to increase in the, the number of opportunities and roles coming through I think also with the movement in the market from the candidates again that is going to have a knock-on effect with opportunities coming in and certainly with the number of inquiries and um, candidates reaching out I can only see continuing in a positive way.